Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. This video is designed to be used in conjunction with the worksheet that you'll find in the description below. And in this video, we're going to answer question two from that worksheet. Hopefully, you've already seen the first video, the answer to question one as a worked answer. And in this video, we're going to work through the answer to question two. We're going to go through it a little bit more quickly because hopefully by now you've started to get the idea behind how to do this question. And hopefully you'll be checking that you've got the right answers after attempting it yourself. So let's make a start. So the first part of the question asks us to find the inductive reactance of the circuit. So part one asks us to find the inductive reactance. Now, as well as the information that you can see on the board here, we've got two further pieces of information from this question. We're also told that the voltage that we are connected to is a 240 volt supply. So the voltage is 240 volts. And we're also told that the frequency of this circuit is 50 hertz. So it's connected to a frequency of 50 hertz. We're going to need some of that information in order to be able to answer this question. So let's have a look at this now and see if we can figure out what the answer is going to be. So hopefully from the previous video in this series and also from other videos on Joe Robinson training, you'll now know that to calculate the inductive reactance of a circuit, we need to use this formula. XL is equal to 2 pi FL, which looks something like that. What we're then going to do is just stick the numbers in again for a more detailed explanation of this uh, calculation uh, and to go through it a little bit more thoroughly then please watch other videos on this channel that will help you to deepen your understanding of it. If we put our numbers in place now we've got 2 times pi multiplied by the frequency of the circuit which is 50 hertz so that's 2 times pi times 50 and then we're going to times that by the inductance of the coil so L is the inductance of the coil and that is 132.6 milli Henry's, so it's going to look something like that. We then need to volley this into the calculator, so we'll grab our calculator. I'm using the Casio FX85 GT Plus, a beautiful bit of kit which is now discontinued, and we're going to put that into the calculator. So we've got 2 times pi times 50 times 132.6, and once again we need to use the times 10 to the power of button at the bottom, and then on this calculator the next number you put in becomes the value that we're going to use. So instead of having milli henrys on the end of this, we remove the little lowercase m there and replace it with times 10 to the power of minus 3. Okay, so that changes that into thousandths, which is what milli means. So times 10 to the minus 3 is equal to, and in this case we've come out with an answer of 41.66. Ohms. So this is inductive reactance, so it's measured in ohms, 41.66 ohms after we've rounded that off. So there's the inductive reactance of the circuit. Part two of the question asks us to find the impedance of the circuit. So we're going to find the impedance for part two and to calculate the impedance of an AC circuit that has uh, resistive and inductive loads connected, we use this formula. We say that Z, which is the impedance squared, will be equal to R squared plus XL squared. So we don't want to find Z squared, we want to find Z by itself. So that's going to become the square root of R squared plus XL squared. So if we now put the numbers in here, we'll find that Z is equal to the square root of 120 squared. So that's 120 squared plus uh, 41.66 squared. 41.66 squared. And that will give us the answer to the value of impedance. So Z is equal to, put this into the calculator, the square root of 120 squared plus 41.66 squared. And that comes to a total of 127.03 ohms. So we've got a total impedance for this circuit, a total opposition to current flow of 127 0.03 ohms like that. Part three of this question asks us to draw an impedance triangle to scale for this circuit. So this is going to be part three. So if we look up here at part three, we want to produce a scale 
impedance triangle. So the first thing we need to do is decide on a scale. Now I'm trying to fit mine on the whiteboard. You'll need to fit yours onto a piece of paper. So our measurements might be slightly different, but the principle remains the same. So I'm going to use a scale. That's the first thing I need to decide. I'm going to say that one centimeter on my drawing is going to be equal to four ohms. I suspect on yours you'll need to use a slightly smaller scale, so you might want to use one centimetre equal to maybe five or six ohms, something like that. So first of all, I'm going to draw my uh, line to represent resistance. For this, I'm going to need my weapons of maths instruction. No? Okay. So uh, we're just going to draw, first of all, a line to represent the resistance. Now the resistance is 120 ohms. I want to go from this side of the ratio to this side. So I'm going to do to get from 4 to 1, I would divide by 4. So 120 divided by 4 will give me my value in centimetres and 120 divided by 4 will give me 30 centimetres. So that's going to fit on here like this. So I try and get that reasonably level and then we'll draw the triangle. So We've got here our line, which is 30 centimetres long. And we can see there we're quite happy with that as a value. So here, the resistance of this side of the triangle is equal to uh, 120 ohms. And that is 30 centimetres long. Okay. Now, because this is an inductive triangle. I need to have a right angle at the right side. So I always like to do my right angles on the right side. Again, you need to double check with your teacher before going into your exams exactly what their expectations are for you to produce this triangle. But I'm going to put the right angle at the right hand side. That's the way I like to do it. And I'm also going to have my inductive triangle pointing up. I always go induct points up. And there's other uh, videos in this series that show us why this triangle points upwards. So the vertical side here, the side that's pointing up, or it would be pointing down if it was a capacitive triangle, uh, would be uh, the value of inductive reactance, which we've calculated at being 41.66 ohms. So if I divide that by four, I'm going to get 10.4. So I've got 10.4 centimeters. So this is going up the ways now. So I'll start from a slightly different value, do this a different way so that my ruler reaches all the way up. And there's 10 centimetres and add on 4 millimetres, which gets me to just about there. And then what I should find is that when I complete this triangle, so I'll show that as being the right angle, this is the inductive reactance, which is equal to 41.66 uh, ohms or 10.4 centimetres. Now when I go and put the long side on this to represent the impedance, so this long side represents the impedance, and if you're wondering where this triangle has sprung from, again there's videos on Joe Robinson training to explain how exactly this works. We find that this length here uh, should represent this value here, so we should be coming out with 127 divided by 4 to get to the centimetres is going to give us just under 32 centimetres. So if I measure that distance there, yeah, look at that, that's beautiful. Just under 32 centimetres. So we'll put the exact right value onto the board in a moment. And we'll find if we do this calculation, we'll come out with uh, 31.76 centimetres, which again, if we multiplied that by four, we would find that the impedance on this side of the triangle is equal to 127.03 ohms. Always like to show the angle there, because of course that angle is very important. It tells us how far the current and voltage are out of phase by, and that's our impedance triangle drawn. Now again, just make sure that you check with your teacher exactly how they want you to draw this triangle, what information they want you to display to maximise the marks that you'll get should a question like this come up in your exam. Now part four of this question asks us to find the current flow into the circuit. So to find that, we're going to say that the current I, now obviously we just use Ohm's law for this normally, but in an AC circuit, if we're interested in the total flow of current into the circuit, we need to use the total impedance of the circuit, not the resistance. So we'll use something that looks like Ohm's law, but instead of doing R on the bottom, 
we'll have Z down there for the total opposition to current flow. So the voltage is the applied voltage into the circuit. So in that case, we'll start calling this maybe VT or VS, we'll call that for the supply voltage. So we'll just label that as VS. So we've got 240 divided by the total impedance of the circuit, which is 127.03. And if we stick that into our calculator, we'll figure out what the answer to that value will be. So we've got 240 divided by 127.03, and that comes out at 1.89 amperes. So we've got 1.89 amperes if we ran that off to two decimal places. Part five asks us to calculate what voltage would be measured across the resistor and the inductor. So we're gonna figure out what the voltage is across the resistor and what it is across the inductor. So for part five, we're going to take Ohm's law. So we start from I equals V over R, and then we're going to transpose it to make the voltage the subject. So at the minute we've got voltage, we're dividing it by R. The opposite of that is to times by R. So we end up with a formula that looks like this. V is equal to I multiplied by R. And then we just put our numbers in. We calculated the current in the previous part of the question, 1.89. Now in this case, because we are gonna first of all find the voltage across the resistor, this will be V R, so that's going to tell us the voltage across the resistor and therefore we are going to use the value of resistance from within the circuit. So we're going to do 1.89 times the resistor value, which gives us 120. And then if we put that into our calculators, 1.89 times by 120 gives us 226.8. So we've got 226.8 volts. Now, when we look at the voltage across the inductive part of the load, so we're going to now do a calculation that looks like this. We've got VL is equal to I. And again, instead of multiplying by R, we're going to multiply by the opposition to current flow that the circuit would find across here. And we've calculated that as being 41.66. So we're going to do that constant current times by the inductive reactance of this circuit. So that is uh, 1.89 for our current multiplied by 41.66 ohms. And again, if we put that into the calculator, we find we've got 1.89 times by 41.66, which gives us 78.74 volts. So, that's the voltage that is required across the resistor to keep 1.89 amps of current flowing through it. And that is the voltage that is required across the inductor to keep 1.89 amps flowing across that part of the circuit, or flowing through that part of the circuit rather. Now you'll notice again, these two values do not add up to give us the total circuit voltage, and that's because they are related not by adding them together, but by combining them using Pythagoras' theorem. Please see a different video in this series to understand that a bit more. Part six of the question asks us to find the power factor of the circuit. So part six, which we'll find up here, asks us to find the power factor. Now in this circuit, the easiest way to find that power factor is simply to do resistance divided by impedance. There's lots of ways that we can calculate it. There's other information that we can get out of this, but bear in mind, we're just trying to answer the question that we've got in front of us at the moment. So we're gonna say power factor is equal to R over Z, which gives us a value of 120 divided by 127.03. And again, we'll volley that into our calculators and 120 divided by 127.03 gives us an answer of 0.945, if we go to three decimal places, so 0.945. So that's what we've got there. We've got a power factor of 0.945. Now you'll notice throughout this entire question, I've every time put the, um, unit on the end of the number, that's really important. If you're doing this in a written type exam, you wanna be able to get maximum marks, so make sure you put your units in. Uh, you can see that we've got amperes, volts, 
but you'll notice that there's no unit on the end of the power factor because power factor has no units. It's simply a ratio between the two sides of this triangle and also just happens to relate to the cosine of that angle there. But again, see a different video for a further explanation of that. Part seven of this question asks us to find the true power of the circuit. So part seven asks us to find the true power. So power is equal, we know, to current multiplied by the voltage. But again, we just need to make sure that we know which voltage we're dealing with. Because we're interested in true power, that is the power that's generated by the resistive part of the load. And therefore, we're going to use the voltage that we'd find across the resistor to find the true power. So we're going to use 226.8 volts as our uh, voltage. So that will be the resistive voltage. So we take the current that's flowing through the resistor of 1.89 and we multiply that by the voltage that we'd find across the resistor, which is 226.8. So 226.8 and 1.89 times 226.8. If we volley that into the calculator, will give us our answer. 1.89 times 226.8 is going to give us an answer of 428.65 we'll go to there. So 428.65 watts. So that is how much power the circuit is needing to use in order to operate effectively. And that would be dissipated mainly in the form of heat. So 428 0.65 watts. There we've calculated the true power. So all that remains for this video is to say thank you very much for watching.